The Hypercube 3D printer can be more than just a 3D printer. In this video series, we'll discover what other functions the Hypercube CNC can perform. To kick this off, we'll begin with a simple pen holder. This design allows a pen with diameters of between 8 to 11 millimeters to fit between these two towers, and a thumb screw to clamp the pen in place. For this pen holder, you're going to need six M3 hex nuts, one M3 by 20 millimeter screw, both of which you should have spare as part of the fixings to assemble the Hypercube 3D printer. Four of the nuts will be used to affix the pen holder to the base plate. One of the hex nuts will be inserted on top of the tower to assist in clamping the pen and the holder. And the last hex screw will go in the thumb screw. Assembly of the thumb screw is very simple. Take the M3 by 20 millimeter screw, insert it into the circular side of the thumb screw, leaving the hexagonal side free for the hex nut to screw over the screw, screw it down until it gets to within that location, then use a Phillips head screwdriver to clamp around this thumb screw. And that's it. And for the pen holder, take one of the M3 hex nuts, insert it into the top of one of the towers, just like that. The thumb screw then enters from the opposite tower. And provides the clamping mechanism. And lastly, for the base, you can insert the four hex nuts into the base of the pen holder, or you can use nylock nuts instead. And attach the pen holder to the Hypercube X carriage. And lastly, insert the pen. And clamp down. In a previous video, I demonstrated drawing with the Hypercube. I imported raster and vector picture files into Cura version 15.04, which allowed the 3D printer to draw. Here's another option, Fusion 360. Fusion 360 has an inbuilt CAM, which stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. We can use this CAM functionality of Fusion 360 to create G code directly to drive the 3D printer. In Fusion 360, We'll start with a new model design. We'll create a box on the X and Y plane, clicking in the center, and then creating the dimensions of the box 200 by 200 millimeters. And finally, transforming this box from normal lines to construction lines. This will represent the bed platform of the Hypercube. We'll now insert our picture file. We'll choose Insert. SVG, click the browse button and we'll choose our SVG picture file. Here we can see this plain SVG file that I've imported. It's too large to fit within this box so I need to scale it down. To do that I'll click on this icon and drag it smaller. Now I need to move this plane to within this box. I'll drag the corresponding arrow up and across. Perfect. And hit OK. And finally, stop sketch. We can now go across to CAM. Within CAM, this is where we're going to create our G code to be able to draw this picture directly. To do that, we'll click Setup. The operation type will be milling. The orientation will be model orientation. The origin will be model origin. The stock will be relative size box and no additional stock. And the post process we can leave as default. Click OK. 
Now we can create our toolpaths. To do that, we'll choose the 2D drop down menu, we'll choose Trace, we'll choose our tool to begin with. The tool we'll choose is the smallest diameter drill we can select. In this case, it's this top one, this 1 16th spot drill. Click OK. For the coolant, we'll disable that. And the last thing we need to change here is the cutting feed rate. We'll change it from 381 millimeters per minute to 2400 millimeters per minute. That will speed up the drawing using the pen as we're not actually going to be drilling this particular picture. Moving across to geometry and selecting the top view and rotating so the plane is facing us correctly, we can now choose all of the tool paths that we want the pen to draw around. At first this might seem cumbersome, but in reality you can choose which lines that you want the pen to draw. This way we can just choose the outline of the plane or the entire plane. It is our choice. Once you've selected all the lines that you wish to draw, click on the next box. We want to change the retract height to 2mm. This is how high we want the pen to move when it's not drawing. We want to change the feed height to 0mm so it makes contact with a piece of paper. And we want to change the clearance height to 0mm. Moving across to passes, we don't need to use chamfer. Finally, moving across to linking, there is nothing in here to change. Click OK. We have now successfully created our tool paths for the pen to be able to draw this particular design. We can view how the pen will be drawn using the simulation button. Clicking on simulation and orientating our view so we can see the pen movements. We can hit play and we can see how the pen is going to draw this design on the piece of paper. We can speed this up. Looking at the statistics, we can see the total machining time is 2 minutes and 2 seconds. Fusion 360 predicts to draw this will only take 2 minutes and 2 seconds. The last thing we need to do is export our toolpaths into G-Code. To do that, we'll click Post Process. I've created a post processor for the Hypercube 3D printer, but in reality, it'll work for any 3D printer running the Marlin firmware on the Arduino. Here, you select the Hypercube CPS file, and we're greeted with all these options from the post processor I've created. Don't worry about this for the time being, the defaults will work just fine. Just select your output folder and your uh, program name and click post. This will then create the G code, in this case called plain G code, in this folder. And upon saving, we are greeted with the actual G code. And now we're ready to draw. We'll start with a piece of paper on our build platform. And I'm just attaching the piece of paper with the same binder clips that I use when 3D printing. One on each corner. Make sure the piece of paper is flat. Of course you could load up anything else under here, it doesn't have to be a piece of paper. It could be a piece of cardboard, it could be a diary, it could be a book. Anything that you want to draw on with a pen. Before we can send the G-code file to the 3D printer, we just have to home this printer manually. We're not going to use the X, Y or Z end stops. And we're doing this because as we progress with Fusion 360 and as we start milling and cutting and laser engraving, the home positions are always going to be different. And for a printer of this size or a CNC machine of this size, it's not that much effort. We'll start by removing the pen lid. We'll move the X and Y coordinate. In this case, I want to start it actually at position zero. And I want to raise the bed until the nozzle 
is just touching. And I'll just put another spare sheet of paper under here as I want to get that just right. One paper thickness. Right about there. In Prontoface, we can load the G-code file we exported out of Fusion 360 and open it up. Here you can see the travel moves that Prontoface is going to do to draw this particular shape on the build platform. And we can see the estimated duration here is two minutes and one second. We'll start by hitting connect and then print. And here it is, the completed plane drawn from Fusion 360. It took two minutes and five seconds to draw this, quite fast, and Fusion 360 predicted two minutes and two seconds, so that's basically spot on. And you saw while it was drawing, every time the pen had to move from one location to the other, it was correctly raising the pen, moving to the next location, and then dropping. That ensured that the pen wasn't just drawing squiggly lines all over the plane. And just like with Cura, you can see the lines are nice and straight, and also the curves are nice and round. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video and the Hypercube 3D printer, consider supporting me on Patreon. There's plenty more videos to come, and your support is greatly appreciated.